let us see a technique to discover hidden malware just using QFlows in QRadar. We're going to use it with an example of the NotPetya GoldenEye uh, malware. As you know, the latest version of this malware does not start encrypting and attacking the machine in a visible way immediately. It actually schedules a shutdown for an hour and during that hour tries to propagate and to find other victims in the network that it has access to. And then, after that one hour, does the reboot and does the encryption. How can we detect the malware when it's in those non-obvious uh, stages of uh, propagation? This is a work based on an excellent analysis that uh, Leopoldo Aguirre, also known as Polo, did uh, with this attack. Let me show you what he did. In his lab, Polo detonated the malware from this machine and then he has three other, uh, two other Windows boxes and he allowed the malware to propagate onto these other addresses. And we're going to see all this nice detail uh, in this in this video and subsequent uh, videos. Then Polo with his uh, deep skills uh, used Wireshack and he discovered several things. Let me show you some of the things that he discovered about this malware. But before I proceed, I want to show you this methodology because this is not only good for this particular malware, it can be used for any other. The write-up that Polo did is actually going to be available on a link uh, that will be on the video description that you can access and, and get all the, all the actual detail. So you can use it with, uh, with other uh, future version of the malware because uh, we feel pretty confident that this, that this type of techniques are going to be uh, more widely used uh, in the near future. So the first thing that Polo uh, detected was the, the known SMB exploit. Uh, he also detected the propagation stages of the malware and what the malware did on it. He detected a there's a, a, a utility for Mark Rosanovich uh, from Sys Internal called PSXEC, uh, PSXEC SVC, but the malware actually use uh, uh, rename the file co and call it DLL host dot dat to try to disguise uh, its presence. So if you are looking for PSXEC, uh, you you will not find it. Uh, there were also some usage of uh, SVC control. There was the usage of admin dollar uh, for shares uh, to, to actually propagate. And very interestingly, uh, he detected that it not only uses IPv4, but also uses IPv6. And the reason for that is uh, that, that it's, there are some tools out there that do not understand IPv6 traffic. So that's another way that the malware tries to hide itself, taking advantage of that. So this malware actually did that. This did, did uh, use those two protocols. And then from these, he derived seven hex signatures. So there are seven unique patterns of traffic that he, uh, I, where, where he identified all these stages of the malware. Then he created seven searches. These are not ordinary searches. In Curator, there is a new AQL function called payload to hex, and you can get that from just the uh, installing the WannaCry or the Petya content pack and that gives you that capability and this search is actually very interesting because it allows Curator to 
take the payload, convert it into hex, and then do a comparison with this type of signatures in order to find the presence of the malware. We're gonna, what we are going to be doing in these videos is using Kali, we're going to replay all those pickup that Polo recorded in his lab. But we are not going to do Wireshark. I may show you the Wireshark screen where he uh, dissected the malware and show the hex screen just for to show you but you don't have to have those skills those are provided in that uh, uh, file that I mentioned to, to you before and, and and you can get the similar information from snow rules and other other uh, you know white hacked uh, people that generates those uh, those patterns so but we're gonna replay it here and we're gonna be using the the QFlow capabilities of Curator that most of you probably already have. And then we're going to be executing those seven searches. And you're going to be seeing beautifully how Curator can discover malware, even if it's lurking, heated in your network, that can be waiting for the right opportunity to begin to propagate. And this is not only good for detecting malware that's going to be encrypting files and doing ransomware. This is good technique to find malware that is hidden in your network. And you need to assume that there might be some uh, waiting for the right opportunity to exfiltrate data or to do the attack. Once more, you don't have to have the skills to use Wireshark and to dissect the malware. All you need to do is get your searches from, again, snow rules, uh, curator content packs, etc., and just run them on your network and find that hidden malware. Just imagine how interesting this could be if you find a, a malware that, that is hidden in your network, or having the peace of mind of knowing that with similar techniques, the one that you actually get the searches for, you know that there's no presence of that malware in your network.